Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Fresh Off The Reel. This is Lib speaking to you to tell you that this is the first episode that is being posted under the new schedule. Instead of a new episode coming every Monday, now you're getting a new episode coming every Thursday. It's just better for me and Pat's schedule, and it's better for the editing process. So this is just to tell you that from now on, every single episode will be coming out on Thursday. Hopefully this means that you'll be getting a more consistent podcast uh, instead of getting those 15 different fucking delays like we've been having uh, for the past few episodes. Also, sorry about Pat's audio in this episode. It's a lot quieter than usual. I have no idea what happened. This is just a this was just a message to let you know about that. So enjoy us talking about the Halloween franchise. Happy Halloween. Take it away, past me. Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of Fresh Off the Reel. My name's Lib. My name's Pat. And today Wait, can we wait can we restart? Wait, why? Out of a joke. Out of a joke. You just okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of Fresh Off the Reel. My name's Lib. My name's Mike Myers. What? Uh, that's not true. Groovy baby. <laughs> um, this is the Halloween episode, guys. <laughs> this is the Halloween episode where we talk about Halloween on Halloween. Yes, at the time of recording, it is October thirty first. Yeah, it is very spooky. Yeah, and um, for the first time on this podcast. We watched the movie we're talking about today 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, we literally watched Halloween 10 minutes ago. It's, on Halloween. This, it is Halloween. But not starring Mike Myers. But is starring Michael Myers, who is definitely a real person. Yeah, he's a, he's a real person, and you better watch out because he's coming. He always comes every Halloween. He might be behind you right now. Why are you not scared? I'm I'm very scared. Uh, I'm terrified. You can't see me, but I'm crying. <laughs> well, you didn't you didn't say your name. Your name your name is is Pat. My name, name's still Pat. Yeah. <laughs> one day one day it won't be, but today it is. <laughs> oh wait, why I shouldn't be laughing? It's 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 spooky spooky today. Ooh. Off camera, we like right, right as we were like into the movie, I had said something that was basically, uh, "This is the Halloween episode, but we're probably gonna be making a lot of jokes." <laughs> and, uh, we're already we're already off to a great start. Oh, okay. Anyway, no, my Google Home activated. Now that was spooky. You gotta keep that in. That's spook. Now that was spooky. There's some there's some kind of ghost going on here. That's yeah, that's Michael Myers. He's in your house. Shit. I better I better what? run and not call the police. <laughs> if I learned anything in life, it's to do as Jamie Lee Curtis does. Um. So today we're talking about if it wasn't fucking obvious, Halloween, a 1978 horror film directed by John Carpenter. Uh, he did the also thing. Also known as John Carpenter's Halloween. <laughs> he did do the thing. A superior film. This is the only. Halloween that John Carpenter did. Uh, is it a coincidence that it's the only good one? I think not. I think not. I rated it a three. And I rated it a four. Oh, you gave it a four. I gave it a four. I'm not a I'm not a horror movie guy. And uh, we we got into this a little bit while, again during the movie. Um, I don't really consider this a horror film. It's more of a slasher thriller. I know those are subgenres of horror. As someone who doesn't do horror. I enjoyed this. I wasn't. It wasn't too spooky. Um, it was. It was a fun time. I had. I had a good time with it. Uh, the acting is what I expect from a seventies slasher flick. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Yeah, it's it's it is actually a, a good movie. Um, a lot of the scares and the spooks don't really work anymore. It, it hasn't exactly aged well. Yeah. yeah, it it hasn't it hasn't really aged quite well. Like the, the, there isn't even any build up. They they just go straight into the killing. And it doesn't really help that this movie is like the face of the genre and therefore has been either parodied or referenced or redone 
hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah. I think this is something that like if you're if you don't like getting scared, if you don't like things that are too spooky, but you do want to dip your toes into the genre, I think this is a good place to 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 do that. Yeah, it is. It is. A, it's a classic. And fe- fellow reviewer, uh, twenty four frames of Nick, I just saw rated it five stars. Now, mm. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go but, that far, uh, but it is really good. But, uh, it's really good. It's a fun time. Yeah, despite me it's, reviewing, it's, despite me giving it a three, I do think it's yeah, hey, hey, a six on ten is above average. Yeah, it is. So uh, let's talk cinema. Let's yeah. talk cinema, indeed. We will do what we usually do at the start of these episodes, where we'll be reading either the Google or the letterbox description of the film and laugh at it. So I think um, we're, we're, I'm gonna read the one from Letterbox because. It's the one I have open right now, but I I haven't checked the Google one. I want to see the. I think it's the same. I I have it open in front of me right now, so maybe you could read it and I'll, I'll I'll talk about it after. Okay, so Halloween, the night he came home, fifteen years after murdering his sister on Halloween night, nineteen sixty three. Michael Myers escapes from a mental hospital and returns to the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois, to kill again. That's actually a, that's 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 pretty accurate. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. This, this movie is really like simple. Like, like Lib said, it goes straight into it, and yeah, that's basically what happens in this movie. Michael Myers kills people. That's that's the movie. There isn't the really people, a story. Yeah, um, all, all we all we get really as far as like background stuff is we get um I think Samuel is the name of the psychiatrist. The the psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's, it's Doctor Loomis. Yeah, Samuel Loomis, there you go. Okay. I had the cast in front of me, that's why. He kinda gives some background details. Like the movie starts with Michael Myers killing his sister. And then we go straight into it and, and Michael well not Michael. <laughs> Doctor Loomis <laughs> will will kind of sprinkle in some details about like how he was in the entertainment and, and like just to briefly fill in the I think it's a seventeen or fifteen year gap, sorry, between the the, the first yeah. murder and, and the, the return. Yeah, it's a fifteen year. But game. other, yeah, but other than that, it really is just uh, Michael's out of prison. Uh, he's killing again. We're just gonna watch him go to town on some people. <laughs> <laughs> the characters are are super basic. A lot of them are unlikable because they're they exist to be killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's a very simple by the books slasher movie. But it's also one of the classics, so I can't exactly be upset about that either, right? It it really was one of the like first of the genre to really like find its stride. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I think it was the the not the first slasher movie because Psycho was the first. I think. No, yeah, because like Psycho was the first like a big one. Uh, like, there've been other slasher films. This but, like, one's really. This is... uh, this one really, is, I think, set the bar for slasher films. Nightmare on Elm Street was a couple of years before. Scream was a couple of years after. Uh, the Thing was a couple of years later as well. The, like, the, what, the the Shining came out not too long after. Yeah, so like it, it really came out during that like horror slasher renaissance where all like, and all those movies are like super beloved mm-hmm. by by a lot of people. Just in the film are just people like horror movies. Um, it is simple. It's kind of cheesy. Uh, the scares don't really hold up. But uh, it's a good time, and it's a it, it's a classic for a reason. Yeah. Oh, that was my chair. Did you hear Which that? I did. Oh, no. A little loud. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Technical difficulties. My chair might have just broke. Uh, that is a problem. <laughs> oh shit! It did. <laughs> what happened? What broke? <laughs> the, the fucking uh, the hydraulics. Well. I- it's it. I can't bring it. I can't bring it up anymore. It's all the way down. Okay, you did say you wanted to buy a new chair, I and did. now you have the perfect excuse. Yeah, I actually. I look, well, I already ordered it. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, your current chair heard you, or maybe it was, <laughs> or, or maybe it was Michael Myers. Oh no! Wait, yeah, he was. Maybe he's trying to kill me. See, now you have to keep this bit in because I referenced the show. Why do you keep? <laughs> doing this to me <laughs> and because it's funny okay well now that i'm now that i feel like uh like i'm four foot four foot uh <laughs> why did i say it like that okay let's get into let's get into um 
what what happens in this movie um well we kind of already you, said it you kind of already went over like, like the description you lib read is literally the movie yeah like it's just um michael myers breaks out of prison he goes back to his childhood home where he killed his sister finds out a new family is living there and he decides i'm gonna kill him too mm-hmm. uh and that Jamie Lee Curtis is their babysitting. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is uh, more or less the same age as his sister when she when he killed her. Mm-hmm. So that's a perfect target for Mr. Myers, and he makes uh, her life and her friends' lives a living hell. Yeah, uh, he very easily kills her friends, and like, I think there's like four or five people he kills in this movie total. Uh, but just like every other Halloween movie. Uh, he sucks at killing Jamie Lee Curtis. He's really not good at killing Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, he's not good at it. <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis is really good at almost killing Michael Myers, but not quite. Like every character in this entire franchise. <laughs> I remember seeing the trailer for, for Halloween Kills, and um, Jamie Lee Curtis's whole shtick in this movie is like she wants to kill Tim, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but she also wants to see his face. So there's a scene in the trailer where he's she's like ripping off the mask, and and two things. One, we see his face in this movie, <laughs> so <laughs> she already saw it. Uh, and two, uh, just fucking kill her, dude. Let's kill him. Yeah, just just ser- seriously, like if if if, she, if you're at a, a point where you have your hands on his face and you're able to take off the mask, you could kill him. I mean, she she had ample opportunity to kill him in this movie. Uh, like when 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 she was in the closet and she stabbed him, she could have easily just stabbed him straight in the forehead. Yep. When he's on the floor and she's like wrestling against the, like she goes tells the kids to run to get help and then she's leaning on the the door frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, she could have confirmed the kill. Yeah, really. <laughs> she, she, no, I guess like she's she's like a teenager and and murder murder bad. <laughs> probably Mur- takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you, you know. Murder bad. Like she, she literally went to the kids and was like, "Don't worry, I killed the boogeyman. He's dead." <laughs> except not really. Yeah, except he, he's he's about to walk up the stairs and kill us all. Yeah, not only is he not dead, but he's gonna be around for like ten more movies. Yeah. Um, since there's not a lot to talk about for this movie, because. I mean, we kind of just went through it all, the whole thing already. Well, like, yeah, we, we, we could talk about, like, the cast and, and, yeah. and how we feel about the characters. It's, it's the Halloween episode, so I kind of want to talk about, like, the franchise and also... Yeah, the- that, I, was just about, I was just about to say that, because uh, we should probably mention the other movies in the, in the franchise. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of them. I've only seen three of them. This is the third one. So I've, I've only seen the 2007 reboot, uh, which was... True directed by rob zombie and i've also seen the 2018 reboot from david gordon green i've seen all of them except halloween kills uh i've heard it's really bad i have also heard it's really bad uh but someone we were talking to today who watched halloween with us he said it was good yeah but he also said that he thought it was good because he wanted to just watch slasher movie things like just want to watch michael myers kill people and watch people try to escape and i guess if that's all you want from these movies and you don't want like interesting story or characters which are which is totally acceptable because that's what these movies aim for Uh, they don't try to tell a super interesting or compelling story they just want to be dumb slasher flicks Mm -hmm. if that's all you want i'm sure you'll enjoy a vast majority of this franchise even the stinky ones like, Alien vs. Predator sucks, but all I want from those movies are just, it's just fucking dumb action. And it delivers. Um, Freddy vs. Jason to, is is it's really dumb and bad, but hey, I just want to watch two behemoths fight each other. If you want to watch Slasher Flick, where he just kills a bunch of people, uh, I'm sure Halloween Kills is fine. But I'm not looking forward to watching it. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not even going to watch it. Uh, I, w- I will. Uh, I'll probably have more to say about it. When we do uh, what I watched in November, because <laughs> it's too late to watch it in October. Yep. Hey, Unless remember, I remember when? Uh, remember when you said you were going to do thirty-one uh, horror movies? Yeah, but I, I, I didn't. <laughs> Look, I I want I want to make this public, okay? Because this is hilarious. 
Because on Pat's letterbox, which you could check if you go on our uh, socials and click on the um, the link tree, his Spooktober movies ranked <laughs> list only has that five I, movies that I, that I came up on. I watched more movies since then, but I didn't add them to the list. <laughs> it has five movies, and the movie that uh, No Time to Die is in <laughs> and Greece and Venom and Venom. Well, you can make an argument for Venom being in there, but not Grease not- and No Time to Die. Grease is pretty spooky. <laughs> and when, listen, when I see John Travolta, I run, okay? If I saw Michael Myers, I wouldn't run. But if I saw John Travolta in the streets, I'm out of there. What if you <laughs> saw James Bond? Does he have a gun? He always has a gun. Then I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back to Halloween. So there are, right now... There's 12 movies? Two of them are reboots. Yeah. One of them is a sequel to a reboot. Yeah. But yes. Let's go Let's go through the ones I've actually seen. Because uh, <laughs> I'm going to have more to say about those. 2007 reboot. Th- this one really focuses on Michael Myers, his backstory, and what he was like when he was a kid. And... How he became a serial killer and everything. Still doesn't explain how he's basically unkillable. I don't think any of the movies explain that. Uh, they, they, they do. <laughs> it's, not that, it? it's, it's not that he's not unkillable. It's just he's like... From what I remember, he's just like... He's not alive to begin with. He's oh. just, a, just a demon thingy. The demon thingy. Yeah, in this movie, he um, straight up murders children. So, Just, I don't know. You know, with a name like Rob Zombie, you're kind of destined to to do horror movies. Yep. Anyways, I I remember watching this movie in class. I watched this movie in class. Uh, rated R, so you know, perfect movie to watch in class. <clears throat> this was in high school. This is not like college. <laughs> this is like I was in like ninth grade. This one sucked. This one actually sucked. Like I. I think I gave it a two. Yeah, I gave it yeah, a two. The, the both Halloween two thousand seven and the sequel. It's called Halloween two, but there's another movie called Halloween two. So I'm just gonna call this one the Rob reboot Zombie sequel. Two. The reboot sequel um, also sucks, but it's probably the most brutal in terms of yeah. kills out of like the entire franchise. Uh, so if that's what you want, like maybe you'll enjoy it, but that's that's not a good movie. Yeah, it really isn't. And they also recasted Laurie, so you know it's bad. It's not it's not Jamie Lee Curtis, it's Scout Taylor Compton. Uh I'll give you ten dollars if you tell me who she is. I uh, I'm not getting ten dollars, I guess. <laughs> exactly. She was on thirteen going thirty. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's it has some good things about it, the the, the two thousand seven remake. Like I I really do like the backstory portion but the rest of the movie sucks but the backstory portion was actually pretty well done uh the acting's meh nah, like all the other ones but hey yeah but it's it's i mean it's a spooky it's spooky it's spooky it's called halloween it should be spooky yeah, you're clearly not the only one who who has that opinion yeah uh because the the following movie which came out like 10 years later or like nine years later well, the, um, yeah, the was, Halloween 2018. Yeah, 2018. It was another reboot, but it's actually a sequel to the first one. Yeah, and it's 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 a it's a good one. This one's actually good. So like, it's a reboot in quotation marks, but it is it's a direct it's a direct sequel to um, the 87 movie. It takes place like 40 or 50 years later, um, but it ignores everything after, before it. Yeah, this this is it's the true sequel to Halloween. Yeah, so uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is back, and she's like I think the whole the whole thing for this trilogy she's trying to uh, kill Michael Myers. Kill him. Yeah, that's that's her whole shtick here. So like the mm. I mean, it's it's technically a not a trilogy because there's four movies technically. Oh, technically. But like, but yeah, so like Halloween, Halloween kills, and Halloween ends. Uh, the whole trilogy is just based on. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis coming back years later, uh, preparing for the inevitable return of Michael Myers, um, which she's right about because of course she is, and she's <laughs> trying to kill him. 
I think the reason why the the current one, the 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 latest one, is called the Halloween Kills is you know she's trying to kill him, but uh, there's there's another movie coming. So yeah, it's safe to say that she didn't kill him in that one. Yeah, and the next one is called the Halloween Ends. So I yeah, I guess this time she'll kill him. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Because they might it might get he, renewed for another fucking trilogy. And he has he has come back to life several times. Yeah. So. You can't kill Michael Myers. Another thing that was kind of introduced with the the new trilogy is it really like it really um plays with the the fact that uh Laurie, that uh, Jimmy Lee Curtis and um like Michael Myers are related. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's like one one factor that he keeps going after her. It's not just the fact that she happened to be in his childhood home at the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> um, it's they are somewhat related, right? He reminds, uh, she reminds him of his sister, and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. that's why he continues to go after this woman. Uh, Still yeah. a weird plot. It is, but I think they just need an excuse to have a serial killer do things. Yeah, I mean, look, this franchise is over fifty years old. <laughs> And there's a lot of movies, and there's always so much you can do with a concept like this. Uh, the original concept is very, very simple, uh, so they have they have to find some way to do it, right? So. Right. I guess what we're gonna get into the characters now. Yep. There's Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays Jamie Lee Curtis her, herself, <laughs> herself, but 20 years old because she was 20 when this movie came out. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is the uh, Lori. She's the uh, plot armor. She's the plot armor character. She, uh, she's the babysitter who babysits the kids of the family who lives in Michael Myers' childhood home. She is a generic horror movie teenager, <laughs> and she has two friends. <laughs> she has who two hate, asshole friends. Her. Yeah, who hate her basically. Uh, like the the whole beginning of the movie, they're like making fun of her, and and they're like just generally being a fucking bitch to her. Because that's who the, they're bitches to her. Yeah, yeah, they're just bitches. That's that's their characters. They're that's their whole character. Yeah. They're made to yeah. die. I don't I don't remember their names, but they're made intentionally very unlikable because you're gonna watch them get murdered. I by think Michael it's Myers, it's so. it's uh, Annie and Linda. Yeah, Annie and Linda. They're, they're made intentionally unlikable because you know they're you know they're gonna die the moment they're introduced. Um, oh my very god! Stinky people. Were you right or? I just found out. You remember the uh, one of the children that she's um, babysitting, Lindsay. Yes. She's in Halloween Kills. What? Yeah. Oh, wait, the kids. Yeah, the kids. The kids. Are they're, they're, they're grown yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, the they're other, but the in... other kid is not there. Uh, Tommy, he's not there. It's only Lindsay. Yeah, I th- I think they both come back in the the original sequels. Yeah, yeah, in Halloween too. But that that makes sense. Yeah. But they're not they're not canon anymore. Well, Lindsay's canon now. Lindsay's canon, but not not the <laughs> not Tommy. Fuck Tommy. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, that's cool. Oh, she's also gonna be in Halloween Ends. Okay. Yep. Well, she's probably gonna help uh, Jamie Lee Curtis Jamie kill Lee Curtis. uh kill Michael Myers. <clears throat> well, let's talk about uh, Michael Myers. Uh, Austin Powers. So Austin Powers is a. Is, uh, is a secret is. super spy um who works He's... for the uh for the uh British government. And he's definitely in this movie. <clears throat> uh he's got his he's got this catchphrase, uh hey baby. So, you know, he's in this movie, um, but they give him a weird character. Like I don't I don't think I don't think a super secret agent would just start killing people on Halloween Day. Weird. It's really weird. It's it's weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I don't know if I like the change to that character. Yeah, but good good thing that uh, they just stuck to the to the Austin Powers thing. Uh, with the uh, with the actual Austin Powers movies, like it'd be weird if they crossed over like that. Maybe maybe they will eventually. Maybe maybe, but I, I don't think there's ever gonna be another Austin Powers movie. Shame. It's a, it's a <laughs> damn shame. They're they're good. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that sometime. So, Austin Powers, uh, he's the murderer in, we, in we the series. We were making these exact jokes the whole movie, by the way. So yeah, much. yeah, the whole time we were watching, we were just, <laughs> just Austin Powers the whole time. Um, he has the power of teleportation. 
it'd be a very different movie if like it was everything was the exact same, but Michael Myers was played by Mike Myers. <laughs> like the script is the same, everything is the exact same. Just, just replace Michael Myers with Mike Myers, and you get cinema. Absolute cinema. I'd watch it a million times. I'd, not, I'd watch it every day. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna stop with that joke. So Michael Myers. The killer that we've been talking about for 30 minutes. Yeah, he's played by uh, Nick Castle. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's only the he's only the physical actor. Yeah. Michael Myers doesn't actually speak in this movie. Um, we see his face at the end, but he doesn't speak. He doesn't really emote. He's just the mindless killer. And that is that is um, established in the movie. Uh, Dr. Loomer says that ever since um, the murder when he was a child... Uh, he was basically a blank slate. He doesn't emote, he doesn't speak, he doesn't do or say anything. He just stares blankly uh, at the wall, uh, except on Halloween. That's when he gets a little, a little feisty. <laughs> That's when he <laughs> killed his sister. Yeah, for... yeah he's, he's, he's fun. I don't know if, if fun is what they wanted me to describe the character as, but I think the actor just has a great time playing it. Yeah, he he is fun. Yeah. I, 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 like, um, I like Michael Myers. Yeah, he is very... Um, creepy mm-hmm. we did we did say that the spooks don't exactly age well but he he does handle that creepiness that that stalker that boogeyman feel he does it very well he really um does he takes that and he runs with it it's great oh uh, yeah um, i would watch 10 movies of him killing people <laughs> i have and you're about to watch it two more yep <laughs> get ready i'll try so next up, we have uh, Donald Pleasance as uh, Dr. Looney. Is that his name? Yep. Loomis. Dr. Looney. <laughs> uh, he's in all of the uh, original movies, right? He's in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I believe so. I think he dies at some point. I don't remember. Oh, he's also in The Curse of Michael Myers. He probably dies in that one. That's the sixth one. Oh, he's not in the third one. Michael Myers isn't in the, f- the third one either. <laughs> So wait, that makes... what, wait, seriously? Yeah, nope, he's not in it. What? Then what? what what's not... it about? It's about a new killer. Is this the only time they talk about that new killer? He's like a toy maker or something. It's the only time, and he's in all. Michael Myers is in all the other ones. In fact, the fourth movie is called The Return of Michael Myers. That's so dumb. Yep. That's that 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 movie was destined to fail. Yep. I, right. I think it's because he's like. I think he dies in Halloween too. I don't remember. I, 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 I know. He, he does. He does die in Halloween too. Michael Myers. Yeah, and then he's brought back to life. Well, it, it turns out he's not actually dead because, of course, not. Cool. Uh, and and then he's back for like three of them, and he dies again. And then the curse of Michael Myers, I think, is the one where he that introduces the fact that he's he's like um, not Halloween Resurrection. No, I think it's I think it's the Paul Rudd one. <laughs> where oh yeah, he, um, yeah. Paul Rudd's in that one. <laughs> where like that—that's the one that establishes like this immortal uh, demon. A bit late though. Yeah, and the curse of Michael Myers is the one that brings back, I think, both the original kids. I don't remember. But 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 Paul Rudd plays a Tommy. Wow, is it the same Paul Tommy? Rudd? Yeah, it's Paul Rudd. Cool. Paul Rudd. Is it? It's like young Paul Rudd. Yeah, it's young. It's nineties Paul Rudd. Oh, it's so. cute Paul Rudd. Yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis is in this one either. I know she's not in four. I don't. I don't think she's in four, five, and six. And then she comes back in in H two O. Okay. I think I might be wrong. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis, she deserves a break. All she does is keep getting chased by uh, Austin Powers. Yeah. Okay. I'm just looking it up now. She's back in H two O and resurrection but she's killed at the beginning of a re- resurrection so i said the naughty word by accident i'm sorry what, what naughty word I, it's fine if you didn't catch it it's all good with me <laughs> i said uh i said words anyway she's in halloween resurrection and she's killed like at the beginning well i'm probably gonna i'm gonna hear it <laughs> when I edit and now, this. Now, now that i've pointed it out and you're gonna be re-listening to the footage to edit it you'll know what i said <laughs> Oh, oh, I caught it. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I'm not gonna check. <laughs> I misspoke. So, yeah, she's back for those two. She's killed off. Then she is... She's recast, I think, in 2007. 
Oh, like she's, she's just a different. Yeah, she, she's re- she's recasted. Yeah, it's the it's, same it's, character. It's not, it's not the same lore, you know. It's it's the reboot, so like a different character, and then she comes back for for uh, twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yes, but and that is the same Lori. God, this yes. is confusing. In 2018, it is the same Lori. And... This is like fucking Jesus. Star Wars. Well, oh. That's what happens when you have two reboots <laughs> that ignore like 30 years of film. This is great. See, this is what happens when you get into a 50 year old franchise, like actually 50 years old. Yeah. Man, man. Anyways, we well we we were talking about the uh, Loon. Uh, Loomis, <laughs> that's why we went on this tangent. Is is you're asking if he's in all of them? Yeah. So uh, yeah, he dies in one of them. I don't yeah, he di- He dies in one of them. Probably the last one he's in, <laughs> which probably. is uh, the Curse of Michael Myers. That's probably the one he dies in. So he's just, he's the psychiatrist. He's like the caretaker for uh, for Michael Myers. Yeah, his whole job was he wanted to rehabilitate Michael Myers as a kid, and then when he realized his like darkness uh his new job became to keep him in jail forever which he failed at yep really really bad at that really bad yeah he is really bad at that uh well that's that's his character really there's nothing else yeah he's he's just like the the warning guy and i think those are the only like recurring characters in these movies there is um yeah in these movies basically yeah because like the kids come back a couple times yeah the Um, kids the kids are just Lori's just babysitting them, uh, and then there's the uh, there's Lori's Lori and, friends. Lori and Michael are really the the only important characters in these movies. Yeah, it's like in in two, I think. Yeah, two is is when they introduce the like their siblings, and then obviously like twenty eighteen and kills, and those are those built on that more. So those are the only characters they they want you to care about. Yep, I don't know if I'm gonna end up watching the other ones i don't think so i'm not a slasher guy i wouldn't recommend them because i don't think they're that good on their own (laughs) (laughs) i think especially like after like curse of michael myers they really they really start to go downhill see paul rudd came in we got we got introduced to paul rudd and then he left and everything just went downhill so moral of the story is you should get paul rudd see it all hinges off paul rudd if you're making a movie you have to get paul rudd or else it's gonna suck yep that's uh that's your your lesson for today. So so that being said, if Paul Rudd is not in No Way Home, the movie's gonna suck. Every MCU movie Paul Rudd's not in is bad. Uh, <laughs> you weren't in here first. Oh, but what about the uh, Man and the Wasp? That okay. There's an exception to every rule. Uh, Man <laughs> and the Wasp also sucks. Even Paul Rudd could not like Halloween Four. Even Paul Rudd could not save that movie. <laughs> well, do you have anything else to say? Let me think. Uh, I, this one's really simple. No, I really have anything to say. Yeah. It's we've repeated it like several times at this point, mm-hmm. but like it's 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 a super straightforward franchise. It's just this this dude who has issues clearly, maybe demonic, maybe supernatural. Uh, can't die. Wants really wants to kill Jamie Lee Curtis. Really like wants to kill her. And that's that's pretty much and, it. Yeah, he's really bad at doing it, and she's really bad at getting away and living a normal life. <laughs> You know why? Why doesn't she just move out of Illinois? She does, but but like she gets like super just obsessed with with the case, basically. Yeah, that's her first mistake. <laughs> well, like, the second movie is literally just she's in the hospital post everything that happened in the first movie, and he just comes back. The whole movie takes place in the hospital, basically. So it's it's hours later. Oh. And then like the others are just she's just really obsessed with it. The other ones that she's in anyway. And then can, her whole can we shit... can we for the knives out crossover? Same universe. Same universe. Uh, also, Freaky Friday. Same universe. <laughs> yeah, same universe. It's all connected, man. Mean, mean Girls sequel to Halloween. Get it? Because the star of Mean Girls is Jamie yeah. Curtis's daughter. It's very funny. You know, you know, you know who's uh, co-starring in True Lies is Jamie Lee Curtis. So True Lies, Liars. True Lies is there. It's all connected. We're gonna see uh, Benoit Blanc doing the the Michael Myers case with um with Jamie Lee Curtis. I'd watch that. I kind of, yeah, actually, I would. <laughs> I, I well, honestly, I'd watch that. <laughs> Dude, I watch anything with Daniel Craig. He's right. Except Quantum of Solace, I'll never watch that again. You already watched it once. It's too late. <laughs> that plus you, you did your time. So 
Well, that's it with for for Halloween. Good, good, good franchise. Maybe, who knows? No one's ever watched all of them. <laughs> no, I have. A lot of people have. No, no, no. You're lying. No one has. You're just lying. Uh, but we're gonna. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, hot off the presses. We're gonna see what's cooking uh, in Hollywood this week. Not a lot. Mostly just uh, new movies have come out, um, and we're gonna talk about those. So last episode, we mentioned that Dune leaked, and it was very funny. Haha. Well, now Dune is out. <laughs> and now Dune is out. So if you want to watch it legitimately, you can. Uh, Lib saw it. Lib said it was good. I have not seen it. Yeah, I I, I, I watched it when it leaked. <laughs> I'm gonna see it in IMAX. Hopefully, that that's gonna be awesome. That that that's probably gonna be a lot better than when I just watched it at home. <laughs> Last night in Last... Soho was yesterday. It came out. Uh, it came out. So we're Sunday today. Time of recording. It came out on Thursday. Thurs- okay. Thursday. Three days ago. Matt saw it. <clears throat> I saw it. I really really liked it. Is, uh, what would you uh, would you rate it? I gave it a, a four and a half on five. Mm. Uh, it 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 like sits between an eight and a nine for me. Uh, it's I really really liked it. I love Edgar Wright. Um, I think this movie, if you want a strictly horror movie, this does this goes a little light on the spooks, but I I quite enjoyed this film. It's it's getting a lot of mixed reception. Yeah, it, it's it's an Edgar Wright movie, right? So you either love it or you you don't. Mm-hmm. But I think I think this out of all his movies is the most um, mixed. I think people are gonna feel about it. Well, I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, uh, it's great. I recommend it. Gonna watch it when I can. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, what's next? So you do it, Spider Boy. So uh, obligatory Spider Man reference for the episode. <laughs> but uh, a trailer for a little little. Indiegogo campaign fan film came out a couple days ago. And this one is actually an indie film. Like, we keep making that joke, but this one is actually an indie film. Yeah, and it was it is a crowdfunded Indiegogo campaign movie called Spider-Man Lotus. It is uh, made by Gavin on Twitter. It's J- GJP? G- GJK, sorry. GJK, you follow yeah. him there If you want to follow him for more updates. As a big Spider-Man fan, I'm very excited. It- it's adapting... Two stories, Spider-Man Blue and The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man is the name of the other story. It's adapting those two stories. It takes place immediately after uh, Gwen Stacy dies in the comics. And I am very excited because that's what I wanted from the potential Amazing Spider-Man 3 that got cancelled. And I just it, I think that's such an interesting part of Peter Parker's life that doesn't get adapted much, if ever. Um, just because it's it's Sony and, and, and Marvel and like for cartoons, it's not a really happy story, so they don't they don't want to show that part of Peter's life. But I think it's super like rich with with potential for this kind of adaptation like this. So I'm very very excited. I, I he just showed me the trailer like before we started recording, and it looks really good. Uh, I'll I'll watch it. I might even donate to it because I'm excited. Is it gonna? It's just gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna be on YouTube, but if you donate, there's like bonuses. Like there is gonna be a Blu-ray release. Ooh. Uh definitely gonna be uh picking that up. Ooh. I'm very excited. Yeah, so um, Spider Man Lotus. Check out the trailer on YouTube if you're interested and it's great. Yeah, check it out. Uh, and check out the uh was it Indiegogo? Yep. Yeah, check Indiegogo check out the Indiegogo is, page. Yeah, linked on twi- on his Twitter. You can follow it and you can give them money if you want to support the project. Yeah, G G J K. That's hard to say. G J K. So Eternals was screening last week, uh, and the result is it is the lowest rated MCU movie on Rotten Tomatoes right now. It's sitting at a 60-something, which for the average movie, that's not a bad score. But for MCU? For for MCU movies, that's a pretty low score. But if MCU reviews were honest, like half of these movies will be sitting around that that score. (laughs) So like... I want to see it for myself before I can judge. Yeah. It's, but if I am being honest, nothing about the trailers has really sold me. I'm not super interested if I'm being honest. I'm going to go see it because it's a Marvel movie. 
Uh, unfortunately for everybody who's watched all these movies, we're already locked in. <laughs> we just we put invested way too much time. Yeah. So I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see Eternals. Um, but it being the lowest rated MCU movie uh, is a, a little worry worrisome. But I also don't think its review score is necessarily bad. I definitely think I definitely have MCU movies personally rated lower. Um, like I said, like half the MCU probably deserves what Eternals is getting. But uh, people usually love MCU stuff. The critics love it. And this was directed by an Academy Award winning director. Academy Award winning director. Uh, so yeah, the director for Nomadland. Oh. Uh, Zoe. Zoe okay, I think. Chloe Zhao. Chloe, Chloe Zhao. Chloe Zhao. I, I was wrong. Yes. Yeah. But I she's just, directed I just Nomadland. A uh, great, great flick. Uh, so yeah. I just hope that if this does flop, um, it doesn't. It probably will, but I hope Disney and Marvel don't take that as a sign that they can't experiment and try new things. Because this is a very different MCU movie. And it, it it will discourage them, but I hope it doesn't. This is the second uh, Phase 4 movie, right? Not, not not for, like, shows. This is the second Phase 4 movie, it's, right? It's the, it's the third. The third. What was the first one? Black Widow. What was the second one? Shang-Chi. Oh, Shang-Chi. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because with Shang Chi and Eternals, they're doing stories that uh, that never got adapted. Uh, yeah, Shang Chi's a very unpopular character, like not unpopular, but he's not a well-known character. Um, the Eternals, I think, are even less known. I've never, I've never even, I've, like, usually, I the way I find out that Marvel characters exist is through the Lego games, and Shang Chi is in the Lego games, so I knew who that was, but. I, I don't know anything about the Eternals. It, do, I, do you know anything about the comic story? Not at all. I'm a comic book reader, and I don't, I don't even know them. I know the name, but I can't say I've ever read anything from them or heard anything, really. Well, uh, we'll see when it comes out. It comes out uh, November 5th. Yep. So uh, that's in five days. So we'll see. We, we will see. Oh, <laughs> I just read the next <laughs> Pat wrote, oh, yeah, this, Pat wrote this is November a, this is a, tomorrow. Uh, Mariah Carey is defrosting. <laughs> I expect expect Christmas movies in a month. Oh my god. Why is this even in the notes? I don't know. Uh, to go back to trailers, uh, the final trailer for House of Gucci came out. Uh, I don't know about you, Lib, but I plan on going to see it. I'm actually really looking forward to it. Uh, uh, I haven't been following it. I haven't even seen any of the trailers. Yeah. I've been following it pretty closely. I, I'm excited. I hope it's good, and that's all I'm gonna say. I don't even. Hold uh, on. Another trailer. Uh, this is something I know Lip has seen because we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the trailer for Lightyear came out. Yeah, now that. The, um, that it's not a prequel, but it's like a story. It's the story about the real Buzz the, Lightyear. Well, the real, real Buzz Lightyear, the person the toy is based on. Yeah, in, in Toy Story. Yeah, in in the in the Toy Story universe, uh, I guess Buzz Lightyear is not a original toy it's based off a real person in that universe and this is the story about buzz lightyear the guy who worked at star command uh and it looks really good it looks beautiful it i think it's uh, definitely pixar's like best looking movie so far visually it looks great um chris evans is voicing buzz mm-hmm. uh he sounds really great in the role um it looks super interesting the the, the music is great i'm just i'm really excited for this I'm ready to hear an orchestrated cover of You Got a Friend in Me. <laughs> ready for, for that trailer shot to be in the movie exactly as is, where the, where the other the other pilot is like, the other astronaut says, uh, to infinity, Buzz says, and, and it cuts. <laughs> and we're going to have to wait 10 years to hear and beyond, just like Avengers Assemble. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know it's going to happen. I'm, I, I, I'm expecting it. I, I when I watched the trailer and I looked into at the comments, uh, a lot of people were like, "Now I want Woody's Roundup to be an actual show." <laughs> hey, maybe if this does well, they'll they'll do something. Who knows? Yeah, like I'm 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 okay with this. Like a lot of people are not okay with this. I'm okay with this. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be live action originally, and when I heard that, I wasn't okay with it. But then I I found out it was animated, and then I saw this trailer, and I'm 100 percent on board. 
and the animation looks great it, it looks yeah. it's on it's on the line of being uncanny because the, the humans look really really good uh but buzz has that big old chin so you know it, it grounds you to reality <laughs> <laughs> but oh, wait i'm seeing a lot of complaints that they removed the swirl now it's just like yeah a i saw that too like the swirl's a, a toy dude like, <laughs> yeah that's the toy <laughs> it's a single hair are, are, are we gonna talk about the next one nope we're not okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay that's the end of hot off the presses <laughs> yeah. so it's it's time for the restaurant's the closed segment. Hmm. tell us about the final segment pat so last week, I recommended a movie, a, a superhero movie, mm-hmm. not an MCU movie, not a DCEU movie, not even Sam Raimi Spider-Man, <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's in the same era. <laughs> I recommended my friend to watch Daredevil 2003. Not the Netflix show, the, the, the Ben Affleck. Yeah, the, the Ben Affleck movie. Uh, I made I made I made a point to recommend him the director's cut for a reason. Yes, and I, I did find and watch the director's <laughs> cut. So, what did you think of Daredevil? Well, I gave it two stars. Um, it's prob it's one of the Ooh. funniest movies that I've ever seen that are not supposed to be funny. <laughs> too low, too low. Too, you put it too high. It is a 6 out of 5. You didn't even rate it on Letterbox. I can't rate it. I, I, my rating would be too positive. I can't. <laughs> Letter, Letter, Letterbox doesn't allow for the amount of stars I'd give this movie. Uh, yeah, I gave it a 2 uh, out of 5. So this is a 2003 movie directed by Mark Steven Johnson. Uh, he did Ghost Rider. I think we established that last episode. I'm just gonna read. I'm gonna read the plot synopsis because this is hilarious. Like a guardian devil, he dwells in a world of eternal night, but the blackness is filled with sounds and scents, tastes and textures that most cannot perceive. Although attorney Matt Murdock is blind, his other four senses function with superhuman sharpness. By day, Murdock represents the <laughs> the downtrodden. At night, he is Daredevil, a mass vigilante stalking the dark streets of the city, a relentless Avenger of Justice. They name dropped Avenger. That's crazy. But in the comics, he's a Defender, not an Avenger. Yeah, well, in the movie, he's an Avenger. No, but... Well, he's not an Avenger, but he's an Avenger. But he avenges people. Yeah. This is a movie about a blind guy who can see from sound. Okay, uh, I, I, let me just preface something. My, I, I just gave it a rating on Letterboxd. You did? My unironic rating is, is a two and a half. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I have to say, um, my my top three superheroes ever are Spider-Man, uh, Batman, and Daredevil. And I think it's really funny that Ben Affleck has played two of those characters. And, he, <laughs> and, he, and he fucked both of them up. He just has to play Spider-Man and fuck him up. Yep, and then the holy, uh, the unholy trilogy will be complete. Who who plays Daredevil yeah. in the show? Charlie Cox, and he is amazing. Mm-hmm. The show is really good, and now that you've seen this, I really want you to watch the show. I might watch the show because the the concept is actually really good. Uh, the the scenes that I did like from this movie are the scenes where you see through Matt Murdock's like vision, like his like quote unquote, uh, like the way he perceives things as a blind man. Uh, but yeah, with su- he, superhumans, uh, superhuman senses, you get some of that in the in the in the the show, and the show just handles literally everything better. And the show's great. Mm-hmm. the The worst thing about the show is is season three expects you to have seen another show, and that's not good. What's what, but it doesn't matter. What show? So like season season three of Daredevil takes place after the Defenders show. Okay. And the Defenders show sucks. <laughs> Okay. But you don't have to watch it to watch Daredevil Season 3. And Daredevil Season 3 is one of the best superhero things ever. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, this movie um, is a movie. <laughs> it sure does exist. Jennifer Garner yeah. uh, is Elektra. And she's terrible. She's she's terrible. She also got her own movie. Her own movie, which is, is, is even worse than this one. Uh, is that is it a prequel or a sequel? It's uh, both. It's both. 
the answer is yes. The answer is yes to your question. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> and Bullseye is Colin Farrell. Now, Bullseye is my favorite character in this movie. He's, he's amazing. He's, he's, amazing. Amazing. he's so fucking funny. Again, probably not int intentionally funny. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, I I loved it. I love his overly Irish accent because Colin Farrell he can do it. He can do an American accent. Uh, is is Bullseye in the show? Yes. Is he Irish? No. Damn it! That would have that would have been great. <laughs> he's actually, he's actually the the primary antagonist for season three. I never miss. <laughs> I love never... I love when he just like he's he's so weird he's like licking his finger and touching his 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 forehead. Like the part where he says I want a suit and then he never gets a suit. Yeah, I I want a fucking suit and then he never gets one. That's actually the only time they drop the f bomb and I uh, that's great. I love that. The uh, director's cut is rated R as opposed to the theatrical release, which was PG thirteen. Um, I was caught okay. off guard from John John Favreau. I I did not know he was in this movie. He's um his what the fuck what's his name? Uh, he's uh the where is where is he? He's uh, foggy. It's foggy. Frog, foggy. Foggy Nelson. Foggy Nelson. He's in the show. Yes, not played by John Favreau. Yeah, I know. I know it's not John Favreau. He's a main character in the show. And the the scenes where they're in court, they're pretty good. I, like I I I think it's really funny the scenes where they have to play up his blindness and like. Pretend that he can barely see. And, uh, the show does it much better. I'm sure. I'm sure the it does. I'm sure. The it show does. does everything better. The show's great. Please I'm watch sure. the show. The my least favorite thing about this movie is is Kingpin. Yeah, Kingpin is not great in this. Which again, I, I keep sucking the show's dick. <laughs> Kingpin <laughs> in the show is amazing. I want him in a Spider Man movie. I I really uh I really want to watch the show now because. I'm sure, to, like, I just want to see the better version of this. I also Lots think it's really funny. I also think it's really funny that on Letterboxd, when you uh, pull up Daredevil on Letterboxd. Yep. Did you do it? Yes, it's in front of me. Uh, who's on the front? <laughs> Electra. <laughs> Electra is on the front of the Letterbox page, not Daredevil. Uh, Electra, who probably gets a total of 15 minutes of screen time. Some of that screen time is her assaulting a blind man outside a cafe. Yeah, that's really... yeah. She also participates in one of the Evanescent songs. So this movie oh, has two. Oh yeah, this movie has two Evanescent songs that Pat won't shut the fuck up about. Uh, cinema. It basically, uh, if you play Evanescence, Pat's gonna love it. Yep, it's that easy, folks. And uh, if you go to my review on Letterboxd, it's just, it's just the um, bring me to life. Lyrics. <laughs> that's all you need, but, but that's it. That's how that's how you sell a movie. <laughs> uh, so like, I okay, this movie is not good, but I I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Um, it, it, no, it was fun. fun. It was fun. I did have to take a break in the middle, but it was fun. But Pat, I want you to indulge me here. I want you to tell me like what's what's different between this and and the original cut of this movie. So it's thirty minutes longer. It's more brutal. The action scenes are more brutal, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, Bullseye gets more screen time. Kingpin gets more screen time. There's a lot more context. There's additional scenes with um, with Matt Murdock and him kind of explaining things a little bit better. The original release kind of things just kind of happen really quickly. Yeah. You don't really get time to breathe. Whereas these extra 30 minutes really let the film kind of find itself. Um, personally, I don't think it felt too long. I, I, th I find the 30 minutes needed. And I think the only way I could sell you on that fact is to have you watch the original cut. <laughs> but I don't know if you want to do that. I'm not so. gonna. I'm not gonna watch the original yeah, cut. So you're gonna have to take my word on it. <laughs> Maybe one day, if I get like really drunk, I'll watch the original cut. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is, if you watch the original cut, you still get two Evanescent songs. <laughs> but I don't. So. But I don't. I won't get uh, Bullseye asking for a suit. Yeah, but but my immortal. <laughs> Bring me life. <laughs> Cinema. Oh, well, that's uh, that's Daredevil, 2003 film. 
well 2004 if you're watching the director's cut also fair warning if you have amazon prime video and you want to watch this movie it's not the director's cut the, yeah. like the the movie's on amazon prime video but that's not the director's cut if you want the director's cut i think you're either forced to find it if you know what i mean or buy the dvd yep yeah i um found it <laughs> it's weird that they don't put the director's cut on there well that's the first part of this segment now the next part of the segment um i'm gonna recommend at a movie just like a small update before you recommend a movie yeah uh next week we're gonna be redoing what we did a lot of a couple weeks ago where we'll be talking about all the movies we watched in october mm -hmm. so we will not be doing hot out the presses next week so you whatever lib is recommending me now all the presses is, and backlog uh, sorry yeah, we're not doing either. But so like whatever movie Lib is recommending me right now is gonna be talked about in two weeks. Yeah. So Pat, you recommend to be garbage and I hate you for it. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend you garbage. Yep. <laughs> so we're let's go back to when iPhones first came out. It was like two thousand six, two thousand seven. Did you 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 got you had an iPhone? Did you have an iPhone in uh in yeah. the early two thousands? I did. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is a very popular game that used to be, uh, on the iPhone that still is, but now it's even worse than how, when it was before. So it's a, it's about, it's, it's, this, it's this little indie game that you may have never heard of where there are birds and you are shoot them. Are they angry birds? They are angry. They're very angry. And, uh, you shoot them on a fucking slingshot to kill pigs. You ever played that game? I have. You have? I'm sure you have. Did you know there was a movie of that? Well, I'm sure you did. Directed by two different people. <laughs> I guess I'm watching Angry Birds. <laughs> so, Pat, uh, you're going to watch the Angry Birds movie, um, which is my version of what you gave me. So you gave me a movie that is actually garbage, but that you enjoy. Now, I actually, for some reason... <laughs> That's hard to explain. Enjoy the Angry Birds movie to an extent. You're gonna get, you're gonna get time to explain it when I, we talk about it in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 I for real like this movie to an extent. I know it's bad. And uh, my unironic score is like a two or a two and a half. But my ironic score is like a three and a half. So, yeah, get ready. Uh, oh, by the way, Smosh is in this movie. Just letting you know. <laughs> Fuck me, okay. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Padilla and Ian Hecox. I'm recommending you next time. Hmm? You gave me an idea. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I'm watching Angry Birds, okay. Get ready to watch uh, the Angry Birds movie, and uh, everyone watching, get ready to listen to Pat talk about the Angry Birds movie in two weeks. And um, until next time. I think we're going to sign off here. There's not... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the Jazz Walk Jazz Walkers! Yeah. I forgot. I I have to mention this. <laughs> so, for a while we've been um, for, for, I think for the whole time that we've been posting on the <clears throat> the fresh off the real channel, we've also been posting on a different channel, which was under the Toon Man name. But now, uh, we finally are releasing the uh network. So. It's called Jazz Walkers. It's not just us on there and and uh, our buddy Stefano on Toon Man. It's go it's gonna be all of us. We're all we're all going in on there. There's gonna be a bunch of different shows on there. We're just we just been posting there because we're the only ones making content right now. But as time goes on, you're going to see a lot more variety and a lot more different stuff on the Jazz Walkers network. So if you are watching this episode on the Jazz Walkers channel. Uh, props to you because you found it you're before we one. yeah you're a real one you you found that you found that uh youtube channel before we even announced it you're you are now considered a veteran uh you you are eligible for a veteran's discount uh, <laughs> sick reference to a 2018 meme um but with that being said uh i think that's it and we will see you guys in a theater near you good night good night